Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to my Red Power 2 pre-release 5B2 Mod Spotlight. Uh, latest updates to Red Power 2, it's pre-release 5B2, which stands for Build 2. Uh, it's just a bunch of bug fixes, but there's enough changes and cool stuff going on here that I want to show you guys some of the new and nifty things that LRM added for her Build 2 of pre-release 5. So uh, why don't I get started showing you some of this awesome cool stuff. All right, so we'll get into some of the minor stuff, and then we'll start working on the uh, fourth computer here. Uh, there's a lot, a lot. The biggest part of this update was um, the Mine OS got updated from 1.0 to 1.1, and there's a ton of stuff that she added that most of it I don't understand just yet. But LRM is going to help me out with this spotlight and talk me through it as I'm doing it. But let's start talking about some of the cool things that are added. First off, you know that igniter block over here? Well, it can now activate portals. Awesome. Now the portals can open up with the uh, igniter block, and the best part about it is, is if you turn off the igniter block, it closes the portal. So that's pretty neat looking right there. You can simply turn it on and off, and it'll turn on and off your portal. Loving it. Next up in the alloy furnace, there's been some more recycling recipes added. I don't know if you guys are aware, but a lot of uh, Red Power 2 items can be recycled in an alloy furnace to get back a majority of the materials that went into their creation. The alloy furnace can now do this with some of the vanilla items to get back, um, you know, from armor and weapons and tools and that kind of cool stuff. Um, you can also check out if you have some uh, fine copper wiring here. You can use that. I believe, in an alloy furnace to get back your copper ingot and that kind of cool stuff. Speaking of copper ingots, you can now uh, combine them in a crafting table here, uh, somewhere, this one, yes, to get um, some copper nuggets. In fact, all even vanilla nuggets were added, so iron nuggets are now added to the game as well as silver, tin, and copper, which come from Red Power 2, of course. Another neat ability, if you guys are familiar with the cracked bricks texture that's part of vanilla Minecraft, you'll know that there's no way to get it. Um, well, LRM has given us an option. All you got to do is place some uh, cracked bricks in between some lava and some water. So just run it like this. And it doesn't have to be um, still lava or water. It just uh, has to be flowing or still. doesn't matter. And uh, let's get this going. And what will happen is, over time, you'll wind up with some cracked bricks. It's a random tick event, so uh, you'll see over here we've still got our cracked brick from this, but this whole line was set up with uh, these regular bricks right now. And I'll come back in a second to show you once uh, some time has passed, these turn into cracked bricks. And there we go, one of them converted into a cracked stone brick texture. You can now harvest this and place another um, regular stone brick there to get a new one. And all these will uh, convert. Speaking of items that can uh, be converted, you can also get yourself some mossy cobblestone now. Um, pretty simple uh, process, really. Just place down some mossy cobblestone uh, near any regular cobblestone. And as long as it's touching water and it doesn't have a direct view of the sky, Note that there's a little ceiling here. This mossy cobblestone will eventually spread. So I originally placed down these, this block here of mossy cobblestone, and it spread to this one, and then this one spread all the way down the line to here. But you notice that these guys along the back edges did not spread. That's because there was no water touching them. So it has to be touching some kind of water, be it source or uh, flowing. And finally, for those of you who are fans of that little circle brick texture, you can put four stone bricks in a crafting table to get this nifty little stone brick texture. So if you're looking for a way to get some more of that stuff, now you have a way. All right, guys, another change here is to the sorter. Um, if you remember in the past, if any one of the items in here got overloaded, so for example, right now I've got smooth stone going down the blue path. And if we look in the blue chest, we've only got room for four smooth stone. But in our chest over here, we've got quite a bit of it. Well, in the past, once the smooth stone gummed up the works, it would jam the entire sorter. Well, in this case, going forward now, uh, each one of these guys has its own separate buffer to store items, and it won't jam the sorter until uh, you know more items load up inside the sorting machine's buffer. So um, what will happen here is the stone will get jammed, but the cobble and the eternalist should be okay going forward. Let's give it a try. Turning it on. Stone goes through. And there goes the Eternalus. Let's give it a second. Another piece of stone has gone through, and you see the stone jammed. But the Eternalus can still go through. Ta-da! And cobblestone as well. Even though the stone has jammed up. And if we, uh, you know, get the stone out of here, then it's going to go ahead and let more stone out. 
and uh, continue picking up more cobblestone or more smooth stone out of the chest. So uh, the separate buffers functionality of the sorting machine is really a nice change, but keep in mind it only works in non-sequential mode like this. But if you're in sequential mode, either one of these two, it will not work because uh, sequential mode oh, has one buffer just because the way sequential mode works is it goes through one column at a time and it won't progress until it's satisfied. So uh, there you go, pretty neat. And another really cool feature is now build craft oil can be pumped by Red Power 2 pumps. Dun 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 dun, how cool is that? Um, the build craft uh, oil did not work in uh, Red Power 2 pre-release 5 um, build 1 or the previous uh, one, the original pre-release 5, but uh, LRM has uh, worked with the uh, build craft API and uh, now allows oil to get pumped up and fill up your, uh, you know, little oil stuff. So if you want to pump oil using Red Power 2 pumps, have a blast. And I should also mention achievements. If you check out your achievements menu here, uh, LRM did place in some cool Red Power achievements. Check them out. All right, now on to the meat of this upgrade, which is the Red Power 2 control area. Uh, plenty of changes to Red Power 2 control. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have a fourth boot disk inside of our disk drive here. And uh, you can see I've got a blank screen. I'm going to power up the computer with start. And you'll note first off that once it starts up, First off, it's MinOS version 1.1, hooray! And 600 bytes free. It tells you how many bytes are free in the memory. Um, there's actually less memory available uh, by default when it boots up because LRM added a bunch of new words. And if I type the words command here, you'll see there's uh, a bit more than there used to be, but that's cool, she's adding functionality. One other thing you guys want to know about is that she actually changed the way the CPU here interprets some of the code. Um, it's a good thing and a bad thing. A good thing is I think it's a little better and she hopefully won't have to do it again. Um, but the bad thing is that none of your existing programs will work. So if you've been using Red Power 2 Control and you update your existing world, um, any words that you programmed into your existing computers will need to be reprogrammed. So um, even uh, old floppy disks won't work. So if you saved your uh, words onto a floppy disk, those won't work either. So you're basically gonna have to reprogram all the words that you've customized. But that's not that big a deal usually, and it's pretty quick to do. So just keep that in the back of your mind as you upgrade um, your existing worlds. Now let's go into some of the cool changes she added. What I'm gonna do is turn off the computer with Halt, and then uh, attach a back pane here with some memory modules. So let's do a back pane and some 8K RAM. There we go. And I'll be back once this is ready. All right, now that I've hooked up an 8K RAM module to this guy and we started up MineOS, you can see that there's now 8,792 bytes free. Sweet. Gotta love it. So the 8K RAM module is installed and we're ready to roll. So let's talk about the block editor first, a pretty awesome function. I'm gonna pop out the fourth boot disk that I've got here and place a blank floppy in the drive. Ta-da! And then I'm going to show you guys a new command that's available. Uh, it's called disk name. Disk name and a double quote. And then you put your name wherever you want it to be. So I'm going to call it dire disk one and put another double quote and hit enter. Sweet. Now what it should have done is named my disk. Is that true? Yes, dire disk one. See that? I'm going to pop it back in the drive and we're ready to roll again. Uh, now what I want to do is show you guys how to use the uh, block editor. All right, in order to do that, I'm going to put a new blank floppy in there because I've already been messing around a bit and I um, want to show you guys how this works. So let's name this disk name dire disk 2, double quotes. Oh, and you know what? I need double quotes after disk name 2. Dire disk 2 with double quotes and we're good to go. Now, each one of these disks has 256 blocks, and each block can hold about 1K bytes. So about um, 1024 bytes per block, and about 250 blocks total on a disk. And to see the contents of a block, uh, you just reference it by its number. So the first block is number one. To see the contents of that block, you type one list and that will list the contents of block one. Uh, right now there's a bunch of garbage in there because basically what happens is it, um, if, if you haven't wiped out the contents of a block, it might have written some junk to uh, the, the disk when you first created it. So in order to clear out the disk, there's two commands we want to use. The wipe command uh, will function on the last loaded block in memory. So we last loaded up block number one by doing the one list command, and now one is the active block. And if we do wipe, it will wipe the contents of one. 
So what happens when we type one list? You'd expect it to be blank. Ta-da! But it hasn't written those changes to disk yet, so we want to do update, or no, we want to do flush, and that will force the changes onto the disk and kind of save them. Now if we want to look at block two, we could do two and list, and it's going to show me some more junk. And if we want to wipe it out, it's easy enough. We just do uh, wipe and flush. You can do it all in the same line there. And that will uh, force a wipe and save to disk. Now if we do two list again, you'll see it's nice and clean. Cool. Um, and now our, uh, you know, again, we've got number two as the currently active um, block. And if we do one list again, we'll set it back to one. And if you want to switch the active block, you just do um, the word block. Now we're currently uh, working on block two. And we could do list again if we wanted to, or we could do one block. So uh, by using one list, it sets it to block one and lists it. And by doing one block, it just sets it to block one. Now if you want to write your own commands to a block line, it's pretty easy. Uh, you use the pp command. So what we do is, uh, let's do one for the block number, and then pp, both of them caps. And then we do, um, you know, let's say uh, test one, two, three, four, and hit enter. Now if I do one list, oh, look at that. How cool is that? And if I want to do um, two PP test two, three, four, five, and do one list, note that it's written to, uh, again, block one in uh, position number two. Pretty cool. Now remember, we're only working in memory here, and if we want to revert our changes and get rid of whatever's in memory and force a reload off of what's on the disk, we type revert. And now if we do one list, you'll see it's blank again. It didn't write those changes to disk because I didn't do a flush command. So let's do again, uh, 1 pp test 1 2 3, and we'll do 2 pp test 1 2 3 4. Why not? Now when I list the contents of block 1, you'll see those guys there. And if I want to write those changes to disk, of course, I type flush. Now, uh, one list will again show me what's on the disk and what's in memory, both the same thing. And if I were to, uh, you know, wipe and do a list, we've wiped block one. But we haven't written it to disk yet with flush, so if we want, we could revert and get our changes back. There you go. So flush writes it to disk, but any other changes you do working in active memory until you type flush, which is kind of like a save command if you guys want to think of it that way. Now obviously we're not going to be typing test123 and all this other silly stuff into our uh, lines of code here. Let's start actually building a neat little program. So remember block1 is the one we're currently working on, so I'm going to do the pp command, pp, and uh, put an actual command in here. So let's do something like this. We can do one iox set. Uh, let's do 10 ticks and one iox reset and 10 ticks. Now, if we do one list, we should see one iox set, 10 ticks, and one iox reset, 10 ticks. And what that should do is um, turn on my white light for about half a second and then turn it off and wait half a second. And next, I'm going to do 1 pp, 2 iox set, 10 ticks, 2 iox reset, 10 ticks. Now you can see that line 2 of my little program is going to do the same thing, but it's going to do it to the orange light. And let's do it uh, one step further and go with the purple light, or the magenta light, and do um, 3, no, 2 pp, 3, 4. You can see I'm no master of fourth just yet. There we go. And just for good measure, I want to save this to the disk, so I'm going to run a flush command. Now to load our programs, we just use the load command, a pretty simple command to use. So if I want to load the program in disk one, block one, uh, what I do is one load and hit enter. And let's see what happens. Ah, the white light goes on for about half a second. And uh, it does take a little time to interpret your commands, and then the white light goes off. You think it's going to stop there? Nope. It should execute the next line in the command there, the orange light turning on, and then the orange light turning off. Cool. And then finally, we'll do the purple light turning on and the purple light turning off. 
Now the interpreter is a little bit slow sometimes, so if you want to have a delay in ticks be a little bit more accurate, your best bet would probably be to code it into the word before you code it into the program. So let's change this up. All right, so you guys can see I created some new words, white, orange, and magenta here, and put the same commands into a word, and then wrote them to the disk. So if I do a one list now, it does orange, white, and magenta. Let's see if the timing is a little bit better now when I do one load. It should do orange, white, and magenta. See how much quicker that processed? Because the words are going to function a little bit quicker. The uh, interpreter there that reads the code off the floppy disk is a little slower, as you would expect. You know, using a floppy disk, it's going to be slow. So don't write out long commands like I did at first. What you want to do is put your commands into words and then have each line of code execute a word. That's probably your best bet. And of course, don't forget that if you want to do a two list, you can see there's another block here. Remember, there's 256 blocks on a disk. So you can go all the way up to 256. Awesome. And uh, what I could do on disk two is do, um, you know, magenta. White. Orange. And now if I do a two load, we should get magenta, white, orange. And if I do a one load, we should get orange, white, magenta. Awesome. You can also put comments in your code now. So if you wanted to, you could do uh, three PP. And if you want to put something within a comment, let's do this. Um, we'll do magenta again at the end here. And in parentheses, I'll put purple. And I hope that's right. Uh, I don't know if there needs to be spaces or not. Uh, actually, you do need a space after the first open parens, so we'll put purple here. Um, or what you could also have is uh, something like this, or we can do four orange, and you can do a slash like this in a space, and then this is also a comment. Oh, no, I should have done four pp. There we go. And I was working in uh, block two there, remember. So this code should work. The open parenthesis and the space indicates a comment, and then the close parenthesis and a space indicates the end of a comment. Or you can just do the slash there um, to do um, more comments. And what I should have done is four pp orange comments. So the uh, line three and line four should function just fine. Let's do a two load now and see that that works. So we should get magenta, white, orange, magenta, orange. Magenta, white, orange, magenta, orange. That's how comments work. Another thing I should teach you guys about is uh, the new word called forget. It used to be called erase, and it lets you forget a word. So we've taught this thing magenta. If I do um, magenta forget, I think. There we go. There we go. It's forget magenta. Now we don't have magenta listed in our word dictionary anymore. That's a change. That command used to exist as the word erase. Now it's forget. There's also been some really complicated additions, which I'm not going to get into in this video because they're way over my head. But um, the does command has been implemented, uh, among a few other cool ones that, like I said, are pretty complex. But as far as I understand, they're um, traditional fourth commands. So if you want to look up what they do, uh, go ahead and look them up in some kind of fourth tutorial thingy. Another neat command is the ATXY command, and what that does is moves your cursor to a specific position on the screen. It's very useful in programs, but let's do something like this. We can do 15-1 uh, ATXY, and watch what happens to my cursor now, hopefully. Oh, look at the top by the word white. That's where it is. Hello, everyone. See it all the way up there? All right, so that's what ATXY does. Uh, like I said, not terribly exact on how the coordinate system works, but uh, hopefully you guys will figure it out. But that's nice to write in programs if you want to write like a little menu command. You can have your program, you know, move the cursor to a certain position um, and that kind of thing. So let's try like 5, 1, ATXY. And that might, okay, put me up at the top there again. Yep, okay, so I don't know how to use the ATXY command. There we go, I just did a 4012 ATXY and it dropped me down here. 
So uh, maybe the second digit. All right, let's try this. Um, uh, 60 ATXY. No, we should probably not do that low. Hey, look, there I am. All right, that makes more sense. So the second digit is how far from the top, I guess, you are. And then, um, yeah, pretty neat. So ATXY, great for making menus. All right, guys, like I said, this was mostly a bug fix release, but a bunch of cool functionality added. You guys should also know that uh, Red Power 2 and Railcraft play together a lot better now. Uh, Red Power 2 has the ability to interact with different minecarts, and uh, the Railcraft 2 minecarts, or I guess it's Railcraft 5 point something right now, but the Railcraft minecarts um, didn't interact with Red Power 2 before. Now they do. Awesome. So LRM did a lot of work on uh, Railcraft uh, compatibility and a bunch of other bug fixes. There's a long list in her change log. You can go check it out at LRAM.com. And this is Direwolf20 signing off on Red Power 2 pre-release 5 build 2. Awesome changes. Really like the block editor here. That's cool. It's going to make writing fourth programs a lot easier, especially saving them on disk and all kinds of other cool stuff. And then all the other uh, neat little uh, cosmetic changes and functionality is awesome as well. So definitely looking forward to it.